Welcome back to another special edition of Just an Opinion. Today, I am once again joined by the impeccable Flobo. Flobo, it's been forever since I've seen you with COVID-19. Thanks for coming down to San Diego. How are you doing? It's a long drive, and I went through two different kinds of masks, but I made it. That's good. That's good. I heard you went to Target a couple times. Couple times. And you know what? There are also a lot of things. Everything is gone from Target. Yeah. Tough times. So today, we're going to review a somewhat unknown gem in Clerks the Animated Series. So I'm a huge fan of the View Askew universe, and we all know that Kevin Smith is a big muckety-muck in Hollywood, and he pretty much can do whatever he wants, but I really still prefer his early select works. It was after the release of Dogma that I found out that this series was on its way. I was really excited considering Clerks is my favorite of all of Smith's films, and it's actually what introduced me to him in the first place. Well, as for me, I only saw the original Clerks, so this was actually a bonus treat. Well, the show came, and then it went. Only six episodes were made, and only two of them premiered on TV. It was bizarre. Yeah, and if you tried bringing up those two episodes to anyone, they wouldn't even believe you. It was like it never existed. All I'm saying is they shouldn't be loitering around the store like they do. Neither should you, but we let you stay. See, man? If you were funnier than that, ABC would have never canceled this. What? Nothing. Well, in any event, the series was short-lived, and today we're going to talk about all six episodes. Episode 1, Leonardo where Leonardo returns and Dante has an important decision to make. So in this episode, we establish that the only returning characters are going to be Dante, Randall, Jay, and Silent Bob, of course. And that Billy Crystal Robin Williams movie? Ugh. Ew, you girls want to be alone? How did you get into Leonardo's office? Who the hell's Leonardo? This episode deals with the quick stop getting competition across the street from Leonardo Leonardo's quick-er stop. And rude, poorly trained clerks. You think he's talking about us? No. With names like Dante and Handel. Randall! So this was ABC's foray into the revival of the adult cartoon, which I did appreciate, but this episode didn't even make air. Yeah, it's hard to say, like, what the logic was with what episodes they specifically chose and why they aired in lieu of others. It's just, like I said, it's bizarre. Yeah, how do you build a fan base if you start with an episode that's not even the pilot? We don't really know who the characters are, and the fans who are loyal enough to figure it out, you cancel it after episode three. For me, I feel like the takeaway from this episode wasn't so much plot, but format. I mean, we knew that with animated, you have a, a you have an open book to all new jokes, which are cutaway gags and homage to other movies that Smith likes. We're almost there. Why are we walking like this? So I feel like it really wasn't about what's happening, but here's how we're going to do it. True, and also it was on broadcast TV, so I kind of wonder what kind of jokes would have made it past the censors. That is a good question. I mean, anyone who's seen the original Clerks knows it's pretty extreme. It's very much a hard R, so I think that some people would have tuned in just to say, how are they going to do this on TV? You know, I always said this job would be great if it weren't for the customers. That quicker stop is the best thing that ever happened to us. I'm starting to agree. It was really questionable if the show was going to be a spin-off or the continuation of the adventures of the clerks. And as someone who's only seen the first movie, I was fine with either way, but you're right. There really, really wasn't an answer to that question. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm Silent Bob. And I'm Charles Barkley. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Episode 2, the clip show wherein Dante and Randall... You know what? These episode titles are way too long. I'm just gonna go with Episode 2. Electric Boogaloo. Shut up. Even though I remember who had the crowbar, I'm still the biggest idiot ever. So in episode two, uh, it's a pretty funny episode with Dante and Randall getting stuck in a freezer with Jay and Silent Bob. They're using all our air. No, they're not. <gasps> it then turns into an episode with flashbacks of their characters growing up. Dante, this is Randall, Randall, Dante. Hey. Hi. God. But even flashes back to the first episode. Yeah, and here's a twist. That first episode didn't even air, so it was a clip show to a show we haven't even seen. 
If this were a sitcom and we got locked in a freezer, we'd probably flash back to all our old episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, do you remember that time Leonardo Leonardo opened that convenience store across the street? Oh, yeah. So I actually thought this was intentional, like that Smith was just playing with the audience, having the first episode be a flashback episode. Little did I know, there actually was a real first episode. You know what they say, unlucky at love, lucky at cards. That's us to a T. You lose! A highlight for me was definitely the crazy cast of characters that had visited the quick stop supposedly in the past. Hi, I'm Jerry Seinfeld! I'm on a break. Why does 2% matter? I don't care, I'm on a break. Get out of here! Why was Jerry Seinfeld hanging out in Jersey? That's a very good question. With no answer? <laughs> no, I got, I got nothing. It's Jay and Silly Bob! That's Silent Bob. An NBA great Charles Barkley! Hey, kids! I thought we told you to get out of here! So episode 3, this episode paid homage to the movie Outbreak with a misunderstanding between a monkey and a funky burrito. Yeah, those burritos were like changing colors, man. It was kind of gross. Did you take care of the burritos? What do you think? Hey, check it out. Patient Zero. As God is my witness, monkey, you are not going to infect this town with your filthy virus. I'll take the whole box. Due to the recent lawsuit by Dustin Hoffman over the alleged unauthorized use of his likeness, the face of Dustin Hoffman in Randall's cartoon brain calculation will be played by Al Pacino. There was a bit more plot in this episode, but definitely no shortage of gags. We're going to have to draw blood samples to see if you've been infected, and I'm afraid we'll need to take a complete sexual history from both of you. What? That's standard virus procedure. And here to take your sexual histories are two giggling girls. <laughs> okay. When was the last time you had sex? About a year ago. A, a year? year? <laughs> this stinks. Shut up. Maybe we can have sex with them. So this is kind of like an end of times episode, which seems a little relevant now in 2020. So I guess the episode, watching it again, it made me think, what would you do if you knew the world was ending? I would not talk to two giggling girls, that's for sure. What would you do? I would buy the entire series of Degrassi High. Good point. But wait a minute, that's what Kevin Smith did. We ordered two cheeseburgers without ketchup, and these have ketchup on them. I don't believe it. They did it again. I thought you said two cheeseburgers with ketchup. No, no ketchup. Why don't you just wipe it off? Episode 4. This was the second of the two episodes that actually saw airtime on ABC. Dante is on trial, being sued by Jay, but no need to fear, because Randall is his attorney, and take a look at his jury. At Foreman, number 31, Reggie Miller. Number 4, Charles Barkley. Number 33, Patrick Ewing. episodes in Clerks Animated Series, this one was the most off the wall. We had an NBA filled jury, Randall totally acting out of pocket, an unfinished final scene. What was going to happen? We had no idea. How come Obi-Wan tells Luke that Yoda is the Jedi that trained him, but in the movie, Liam Neeson trains Obi-Wan? Uh, well, the power of myth. Isn't it true you knew this was a bad movie? Smith definitely pushes the envelope a little bit thematically in this episode with some material that just might not be considered appropriate nowadays. Yeah. Hey! Ho! Oh, hey! Ho! Oh. The courtroom scenes were really funny. You get so many references to, with the NBA players, to movies, actors, and the return of the two giggling teenagers. That's not a thing. Here to question, Mr. Hicks, are two giggling girls. <laughs> okay, do you, like, have a girlfriend? No, I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> I told you! <laughs> this stinks. And I'm an 80s nerd. I love Gremlins, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, so I love the fact that Judge Reinhold was actually the judge in all the courtroom scenes. And there were a whole lot of bananas. 
Axel? Episode 5 pretty much is just a tribute to the numerous films that Smith no doubt watched growing up. We get the Bad News Bears, Indiana Jones, and the Temple of Doom, The Last Starfighter, and a whole host of others. I think this one is my least favorite. Maybe because it crumbled under the weight of its own references, but it didn't quite hit like the other ones for me. <laughs> Why are we walking like this? For the most part, I would say it's very phoned in, and I agree with you, but at the same time, I really like the beginning with the high school reunion. Okay, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, check it out. Debbie Peters is heading this way for a little Randall. Uh... Graves, never thought I'd see you here. Dirty Debbie Peters. What are you, some kind of a soldier? I'm a lesbian, you idiot. What? Since when? Since about two seconds after we broke up. It seemed like there was more emphasis on this episode of inserting Dante and Randall into these pre-existing movie scenarios versus actually telling a different story. Yes, Henry with a capital P! This is your mission. These giant blocks here need to be moved and piled up over there. You see? Come again? And just like in the video game, if you fail to move the rocks, the slave guards will whip you to death. All clear? I can't move those. They're huge. <laughs> Said the man who got a hundred million points. Go on, give it a try. However, there are some enjoyable moments. I mean, I kind of liked all the baseball stuff. You want to see me, coach? No. All right, which one of you's woke me and told me Coach Dante wanted to see me? Who was it? <laughs> See, that's just it. It's the baseball stuff. I just, I don't know. As a young kid who likes to laugh at perfectly anything, those kids were so malnourished. It felt so bad them falling over in the wind and not being able to hit the ball because they were slaves. I just can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't. You can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Episode 6, the last episode ever. Sadly, the title says it all. Yeah, six episodes in and you're done. Sad to say, you know season 2. I've already got a few priors. Harassing Rue McClanahan, threatening Estelle Getty, exposing myself to B. Arthur. I told you hating the Golden Girls would result in something like this. I regret nothing. This episode was extremely self-referential, comparing the format of the animated series to the movie. It's hard to say what might have inspired this episode. Was it just the imagination of Smith, or perhaps the audience reaction to the episodes that aired on ABC? Yeah, it's not every day where a cartoon has a bottle episode, but the clerks did in their style and flavor, which was pretty okay by my standards. We're the stars of the hit ABC cartoon Clerks, and we're ready to take your questions. I love the movie Clerks, but I think your show sucks hard. It's in color, right? And nobody curses? It's nothing like the movie with all the monkeys and the little league stuff and the evil billionaire guy. It's like it's on The Simpsons. Don't. In retrospect, this was probably the closest connection to the View Askew universe with actually a few cameo appearances. You're just jealous because me and Steve Dave are having a sleepover after the fair at my mom's house. Would you two stop it with the sleepovers already? You're in your mid-twenties, for God's sakes. You're just... Personally, I would have liked to see more of this incorporating characters from other movies since, I mean, you really can do anything with animation. You don't even need their voices. That's true. You can imagine Ben Affleck pre-Reindeer Games in the show. Hello, Dante. How are you? Are you okay, Caitlin? You sound a little sick. Oh, I'm not sick, Dante. I just want to show you the truth about the Matrix, Neo. Goodbye. But yeah, I think this really could have springboarded into connecting everything, but it just wasn't meant to be. Can't do that with only two episodes. Shame on you, ABC. Shame! From this point on, I promise that Clerks the Cartoon is going to be more like Clerks the Movie. Who are you talking to? We're bringing it back to its roots. You have my word. Nothing but old school Clerks. <laughs> We're keeping it real, folks. So I guess the question is, why did this show fail? Was it too PG? Was Smith too much of a cult figure at the time that the mainstream audiences weren't ready for him? Or maybe it was just bad timing. I mean, these shows came on during the summer of 2000. Like, 
a couple months before the regular shows would debut. True. Now this series aired on ABC and it was on a virtual island. There wasn't any show to go into, lead into it, or lead out of it. It was kind of on its own. So, maybe that's the reason. Part of me thinks that with the advent of networks like FX, Clerks could have been successful in either an animated or even a live action presentation by staying closer to the original formula, but just on a different network. You make a good point, Ralph, but South Park and Family Guy were also on TV and they had their followings and they had their season renewals. Why not Clerks? That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, so neither one of us have really done any research on this, so we're just freestyling here, throwing out some questions. But, I mean, maybe perhaps Smith was looking for a more family-friendly option as he was looking to diversify a little bit. I mean, look at his career now. He pretty much can do virtually anything he wants to. Yeah, has his own podcast network and all those TV shows and reality shows. This guy has a one-man empire. For what it's worth, this was the best attempt at a television series of Clerks. I mean, a lot of people don't remember this, but they actually did do a live action pilot for this, and it was abysmal. Like, I cannot say enough bad things about it. <laughs> I like sitcoms as much as the next person. Some might even say a little more, but this was just awful. There were no jokes, but all the laugh tracks you want. And as a 22 minute show, it sounded and felt a lot more longer. I couldn't take it. Couldn't take it. You know, here I am. I'm just hanging out. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. While Veronica, the only thing in it that makes any sense at all is walking away. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about pie. <laughs> Well, that about wraps it up for this edition of Just an Opinion. We're going to be back soon, and we're going to do something completely different. And we're going to review a video game soundtrack. Yeah, that's right. We're going to talk about the Sonic R soundtrack. I'm oh, excited. yeah, Sonic R. Everybody's super Sonic Racing. Sonic Tails, Knuckles, and the fact that Amy drives a car. We're talking about all of that next time on Just an Opinion. You're like... The neighborhood is so safe over there, but yeah. there's so much shit. No, it, it's pretty shady when it, like, what happens in that, that alley at night. Well, it is an alley. outside. Is that my car? No. Let me know it's my car, bro. It seemed like there was more emphasis. <laughs> well, I swear you live in a funhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Cop cars and the Charlie Brown. What the hell, man?